the walls of this mansion have heard echoes of unspeakable terror, witnessed the shadows of the damned, and still, to this day, they whisper the tales of a soul forever trapped between reality and nightmare. Tonight, we enter the haunted mansion of H.P. Lovecraft, a place where fiction and reality blur into one. In the early 20th century, our story begins with a man who is often associated with cosmic horror, Howard Phillips Lovecraft. Lovecraft, born in 1890, was a writer whose works delved deep into the unknown, exploring the terrifying idea that humanity is insignificant in the grand scheme of the universe. While his stories have inspired countless readers and writers, there is a lesser-known chapter in his life that few dare to explore, his connection to a mysterious mansion in Providence, Rhode Island. Lovecraft spent much of his life in Providence. It was here, in a mansion on College Hill, that he wrote some of his most chilling tales. The mansion was not just a home, but a place where the line between fiction and reality blurred. Locals spoke in hushed tones of the mansion's eerie presence, often claiming that Lovecraft's tales were inspired by spirits roaming the halls. With its towering spires and Gothic architecture, the mansion seemed almost alive, a character steeped in the dread Lovecraft so expertly crafted. Over the years, the mansion became a breeding ground for strange occurrences that could not be easily explained. Lovecraft often heard faint whispers in the dead of night coming from the walls themselves. Servants reported seeing shadowy figures moving through the corridors only to vanish when approached. These eerie events added a layer of dread to the mansion's already sinister reputation. One chilling account tells of a night in 1926 when Lovecraft worked late in his study. The mansion was quiet, except for the soft scratching of his pen against parchment. Suddenly, a cold gust of wind blew through the room, extinguishing the flames of the candles. Lovecraft, now in complete darkness, felt a hand, ice-cold and skeletal, grasp his shoulder. He spun around, but there was nothing there. The door to the study was locked from the inside. Neighbors also had their own experiences. They claimed to see lights flickering in the windows at odd hours, and some swore they heard screams coming from the mansion, although no one dared to investigate. Over time, these stories accumulated, adding layers to the mansion's sinister reputation. The pinnacle of terror came on a stormy night in 1931, when Lovecraft hosted a gathering of close friends, all of whom were literary minds like himself. As the storm raged outside, the group decided to explore the mansion, each taking a candle and venturing into the darkened rooms. They joked and laughed at first, but the mood quickly shifted when one of the guests claimed to see a figure standing at the end of a long hallway. The figure was that of a woman, dressed in mourning clothes, her face obscured by a veil. She stood motionless, but as they approached, the candles flickered violently and she vanished. The guests, unnerved, retreated to the study where they discovered a letter on the desk, a letter Lovecraft had never seen before. It was written in an unfamiliar hand, detailing the tragic death of a woman in the mansion many years prior. Suddenly, the temperature in the room plummeted and a loud wail filled the air. The windows shattered and the mansion seemed to shake with a force that defied the natural world. The guests fled in terror, but Lovecraft remained, compelled to stay by a force he could not explain. When his friends returned the next day, they found him in shock. His hair had turned white, and his once steady hand was now trembling uncontrollably. In the aftermath of that night, Lovecraft's life turned dark. He became even more reclusive, seldom leaving the mansion and rarely speaking of what had occurred. His works took on a darker, more desperate tone, as if he was trying to exorcise the demons that now plagued him. Once a place of inspiration, the mansion became a prison. 
its every creak and groan was a reminder of the horrors that lurked within. This period of his life, filled with fear and despair, is a testament to the toll that the mansion's haunting took on him. Visitors to the mansion in the following years reported a palpable sense of dread, as if the very air was heavy with the weight of unseen eyes. Some claimed to hear the faint sobs of a woman <laughs> echoing through the halls, while others felt a cold hand brush against them in the dark. H.P. Lovecraft eventually passed away in 1937, alone in his mansion, his final manuscript left unfinished on his desk. His legacy, however, lived on, not just in his stories, but in the mansion itself. The house was left abandoned, and over the years, it fell into disrepair, becoming an eerie relic of a bygone era. Today, the mansion stands as a crumbling testament to the thin line between imagination and reality, a place where the stories of H.P. Lovecraft continue to haunt the living. Yet, even as the walls crumbled and the roof sagged, the stories remained. Those brave enough to venture close spoke of strange lights, unexplained noises, and the overwhelming feeling that they were not alone. It seemed that the mansion had absorbed the fear and despair of its former inhabitant, becoming a vessel for the very horrors he had so vividly described. It exuded an aura of unease and discomfort, a constant reminder of the thin line between imagination and reality. Have you ever felt a chill run down your spine as if something unseen was watching you? If so, you're not alone. Share your ghost stories in the comments below, and if you're craving more tales of terror, check out the next video on our channel. But be warned, some stories are more than just fiction.